Hi, welcome to Talk About. My name is John Twig. We've got a two-part show today. The first guest is Campbell River Fire Chief Ian Bakey. We're going to talk about the open house. And then we're going to have Leona Adams of the Campbell River Environmental Council talking about some hot issues. Ian, thanks very much. Well, thanks, John, for having me today. I, I just yeah. wanted, I'm glad you're able to let me uh, get the word out that we're having our Fire Department Open House uh, very shortly on May 7th. May the 7th? What day of the week is that? That's the week, that's the Saturday. Uh -huh. I believe it's Mother's Day weekend Saturday. Uh -huh. um, we uh, have run it now, this will be our third season, I believe, running it in the, in the spring of the year. We used to run it in the fall, but we've really found right. it easier for the public to get to our event if we ran it in that part of the year. Um, and so uh, it's been very uh, well attended in the last few years, but we still hear people saying, oh, I didn't know about that. So we're going okay. to work really well, hard thanks. this year to get the word out. I've heard about it and I've wanted to go. I haven't gone, but mm. I think there's free goodies and things too. Uh, we, uh, well, we do have lots of information there and maybe you're speaking to the fact we run a for donations barbecue uh, for yes. mustard dystrophy that day. And yes. so they're not they're quite free, not quite free. Um, but yeah, we raise money for mustard dystrophy uh, with a barbecue from generally from about 11 to one. The open house itself starts at 10 and runs through to 4 um, and we try to give the public an opportunity to kind of see what we do. Um, you know, it, it, we, though we're open to have people come and visit us whenever, this is a real formal opportunity to come yeah. in and just kick the tires and, and yeah. ask some questions and look around. Yeah. We do some activities to demonstrate our skills. We typically will do uh, some auto ex uh, where we'll, you know, we'll do a car uh, extrication of a person. Typically okay. we do something like that. We're, the planning is still up there but that's been the last few years we've done that. or. Uh, other years we've done a simulated uh, house fire, you know, as best we can. Yeah. Um, just to show what, how we do our work and what that looks like. Yeah. Um, Are you going to show off the new truck? We'll show off our new, our new ladder truck. Um, uh, the story there being that we've just purchased a 100 foot uh, yeah. ladder bucket truck um, to, uh, to uh, take over from the, the 75 foot uh, 1993 truck that we yeah. have had for years. Yeah. And so, yes, uh, this will be interesting for us. So we've, in the last few years, been offering people an opportunity to climb our ladders. Okay. And so uh, I'm not sure how we're going to manage <laughs> the 100-footer, but we'll, we'll give people an opportunity to climb it, I'm okay. sure. Well, let's leave it there because uh, you're coming back on May the 18th. Well, that's when we tape. Mm. Uh, we're going to talk about the fire department for a whole half hour. Sure, and so the messaging today yeah. is really just to give chance of people a reminder that uh, May the 7th, 7th 10, to 10, to 10 to 4, come on down to the number one fire hall. We have uh, lots of activities for children. What about parking? Um, not on the site. We have to ask people to yeah. park in the neighboring. Uh, but there is quite a bit of room. There's there. no room there, yeah, no problems lots. with parking. Yeah. Uh, we've been fortunate to have good weather in past years uh, with that time of year, and we have things like, you know, there's a fire hose for children to operate a fire hose, and we put a target for them to knock down, and. We have opportunities for uh, people to use our Jaws of Life tools to cut up car parts awesome. and see how they work uh, in, in actual okay. fact. Um, there's all of our trucks are there to be viewed and there's people to answer questions awesome. about that. We do s we okay. provide some information on public education around uh, fire okay. safety. So yeah, lots to get okay. done there. Come see our dispatch center. We dispatch 50 fire departments. Actually, in. that's a story too. Yeah. But you know what? I got to leave time for the other issue. Sure enough. <laughs> okay, Thank you very thanks much. very much. Okay. okay. Okay, we're back, and the guest is Leona Adams, president of the Campbell River Environmental Council. Thank you, Leona, for coming in. You're welcome. You've been in town a while. I mean, we just had Ian Bakey on. He's been in town a while. How long have you been in town? Since I was born. Yeah. <laughs> in 1946. Which was, I was going to say 1899. <laughs> and my mom was born here yeah. in uh, 1917. Wow. In Campbellton, yeah. Wow. So my So family. you've seen a lot of changes. I have, yeah. 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 And you're worried about the environment? I am. Why? Well not just this project. We'll get to that. But okay. Yeah. Why did you know oh, for, well let's do the Campbell River Environmental Council. What is that? And why well, it's the environmental committee. But yeah. what it is is I believe it's close to forty years that wow. it has been in existence and um, as far back as I can remember, Don McIver, John, uh, Dr. John Ross, uh, Doc Murphy, and I thought it was formed about the time that um, Quince of Coal came in. Oh, but maybe yeah. it's been around by in a different name, uh, maybe think, even yeah. sooner than that. I would think so. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like a, a hippie thing from way back. 
in the you know 40 mm -hmm. years ago that's 1976 mm -hmm. so. but there must have been there were, were some concerns probably that well I know there was the Myra Falls concerns right and uh, yeah. so that's why it was formed. Okay. So is it a society? Is it a unorganized? Or? It's a society. It's a registered society. Yeah. yeah. And how does one join? Um, one comes to one of our meetings, um, talks to the, the directors have to um, yeah. say yay or nay. I mean, yeah. uh, and we were pretty yeah. open. We, how we need how help. many people? We're about 12 members What's now. That's not all? Mm hmm. Ooh. So Greenways, uh, they get a lot of people. They do, yeah. yeah. And we are affiliated with Greenways as yeah. far as um, uh, we watch over the um, Quinson River. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, how long have you been president? Five years. Wow. Yeah. Um, why do you do it? I love Campbell River. I really do. Um, we had to move away for a while. Couldn't wait to come home, um, yeah. and it's just uh, something that is important to me. Yeah. Now the issue that's before us is—it's uh, uh, hard to describe. Basic. I'll try. Upland Excavating Limited is a very old company. They made a presentation to council on March 21st. You can look it up, and it was started by George Stewart in the 1960s, and it's now second generation. They're unionized. They're a good corporate citizen. They've got a good reputation. They operate a gravel pit out uh, north of town. And it's almost, well, they've got, I think, 15 or 20 years left, they say. But anyway, it's a great big empty pit. And I guess somebody said, what can we do with it? So they've decided to propose, and they put this little ad in the paper, on February the 12th about uh, proposed waste pit, would that be the correct word? Yeah, that would be the correct word. Um, yeah. They use the word non-hazardous, but it, it's contaminated waste, contaminated soil, and asbestos. Now asbestos is considered hazardous, yeah. but it isn't if it's bagged Properly, I guess. Yeah, and I don't know I if, it's, it. if I don't know if it would migrate into drinking water so much. Well, depend. Yeah, and and it has to be bagged. Yeah. So, um, but they were able to say because that's the legal definition as non-hazardous, which right. they are saying in yeah. any of their material to the public. But the public must know that it is contaminated waste, contaminated soil. Yeah. Now, we got a bit of time, we'll get into it. Uh, the matter has been before council several times, uh, and most recently, as we're recording this, uh, the Campbell River Environmental Council was gonna make a presentation and they deferred that because the legal assistant couldn't be here. But nonetheless, uh, there was a bit of a discussion and Councillor Cornfield and sh asked staff to be sure that they do a risk assessment. And staff said they were going to do a risk assessment, but I think, the company is required to do that? Is the way that it works, no, staff didn't, didn't say they would do the risk assessment. No, they didn't say they would do it, yeah, but, but there was one there being done. There was, could be one done. Yeah. What happens is um, if the Ministry of Environment were to permit, give them the permit, Uplands would likely, the city said, uh, Uplands would likely have to come for zoning. That would give the public um, public hearing, but they would also have to go for a development permit because Uplands is in their west side of their site is in the Camel River watershed and so they would need a watershed permit. Uh -huh. And then on the east side, um, Uplands is in the Quinsome River watershed. So they're within, that site is in two sensitive watersheds. Yeah. Now, the stuff they're going to put in, uh, maybe we can get back to that a bit because uh, it's uh, construction waste and some other things. And, mm -hmm. you know, actually having a good place to dump r refuse is a good thing. But in this case, uh, they're proposing a liner of plastic with bentonite. And bentonite is a special type of clay that if it's wet, it swells up and becomes mostly impermeable. But if it dries out, I know from Saskatchewan, I was there when I saw actually the bentonite mine. 
And, you know, I did a business story, what is bentonite? Well, uh, it's not flawless. And I can understand that the Environmental Council has some concerns that the membrane could seep. And I think the plan is to catch the runoff and treat the runoff in a treatment pond, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, our, um, I, I think our concerns are founded because we have information from Uplands and their consultant of the uh, rate that untreated leachate will seep out from those liners. There's a bentonite liner and yep. then there's a, a, a geo liner. Yep. Um, so no liners are impermeable. To, yes. You know. um, and so we have uh, been given rates at which it will seep out and uh, times that will reach the to reach the Quintsome River. I've asked for a time for when it will reach Cold Creek, which is two kilometers away, and the Quintsome River is five kilometers, or no, four kilometers away. Which is where the world-renowned hatchery is. Yeah, well, that's where the hatchery takes the water from for their hatchery is two kilometers away. Huh. So if it's five, we're, we're told by the uh, um, by uplands and their consultant that it'll take five and three quarter years to reach the Quintsum. So um, the cold creek where the hatchery takes their water from is half that amount away. Yeah. So yeah. I would say yeah. that they haven't given me the figure, I've asked for it. Yeah. Um, I've asked quite a few questions and I've been waiting a month now. You're a pest. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I've, I mean that's our mandate is to yeah. Um, to inform. Uh, I mean, I've read 400 pages yeah. almost of yeah. their reports, which they yeah. put on the website, yeah. which you can't copy, you can't print, you just got to look. And now, oh really? Oh really? And, on, and now they've taken that yeah. website down. So, so they, they did a small ad announcing it, and then in today's paper, as we're recording, they've got a big, well, it's fairly big, half page advertisement on uh, explaining their side of it. Uh, there's a, uh, anyway, uh, you can look it up. Uh, emotion trumping science is a letter that they've got in the paper today. Uh, is emotion trumping science fair? No. No. If you read, I don't know how you feel about it, but if you read that, you'll see quotes, you'll see uh, information that I've taken from the reports. Um, we're out to inform, and I'm, I talked to Al Lashon, he's the uh, Ministry of Environment who has the file, and he said he wanted to hear scientific reasons if we yeah. had concerns, and I'm making sure that I'm yeah. looking at scientific reasons. Yeah. The other part of that letter, um, where he said that there was no, no drainage, well, We've got the an email itself, and documented, it. and, yeah. and the report talks about it. So yeah. Maybe no toxic drainage, I don't know. Well, it's, yeah. it's leachate, and if you'll look at our, um, our flyer, uh, Upland's operation report identifies yeah. parameters yeah. that they, are forecast to... They put out a nice flyer that looks like this, and on the other side there's a bunch of stuff, and this is a map of the site. Yeah, so it's forecast to exceed BC contaminated sites regulation criteria in untreated leachate. Okay. Well, that's concerning. Yeah. Then now, it, it let me, goes. I'm going to okay. jump in and put some context in this yeah. because just a few weeks ago there was a very similar issue down at Shawnigan Lake. Yes. Where there was uh, the province allowed a dump of, I don't know if it was toxic, but anyway, it was not good stuff. And the people backlashed and protested and some people got arrested and, but I think they won because the court said no that you can't do that. They won because the court said that the MOE could not trump the local government on zoning Uh huh. and so they did not have the zoning huh. and now, I don't believe they have it here either. Is this in city boundaries? Yes. So Area D starts a little ways after that. Area D is on the Rico side, I think in the south side. Oh, okay. Now yeah. that's the Rico. Not the now Rico side, but the south side. The south side, okay. Mm. Um, there's actually 
two lakes here. There's a Rico Lake, which is a little lake on one side of the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, then on the other side, there's McIver Lake, which is where the city's water intake is. So they're just a few hundred meters apart, if yeah. or, or less. Yeah. I'll and we, have, we may or may not have uh, images of that. Uh, if, if we get them on, that's great. If we okay. don't, well, it's too bad. Well, the road width is 66 feet. Uh -huh. Now, you can, I don't know, but for, for here, I can show you that Rico Lake abuts into yeah. the property. Right. Now, and, we were... And Uplands is using Rico Lake for its own industrial water. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, they have a water license, and yeah. there's a uh, pump house right here. Yeah. And is, is this what this photo up. is? That's what that photo is. Okay, I'll hold that one up. Yeah. Can you get that, Valerie? There you go. There we go. Okay, look at that. So this little lake, we don't know how deep it is. And That's the problem. It, it could be so deep that it'll take leachate from the gravel pit. And then if it percolates up and then it flows down into the McIver Lake, that's where the city's under construction, new underwater drinking water intake is going to be. Well, McIver Lake is part of Campbell Lake and it's always yeah. been um, yeah. part of our drinking water. And yeah. I believe it goes, travels through the Lador Dam into John Hart and, and okay. we pull our water from John Hart. Oh, okay. And, um, but here we have concerns because we were told by this map that all the drainage goes east. Yes. And then um, I even have, when I questioned, uh, I even have in, in black and white in a, in a response to my questions, an answer saying Rico Lake does not drain into McIver. And McIver, yet you've got images of it actually doing that. Yes, and, yeah. and yet we have images of it doing that. Yeah. So now we're concerned because there's been quite a few, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. It's concerns? Quite, a, quite a few different They'll tell us one thing, and then I read the report, and it's it's not exactly right. They're saying, you know, um, Rico Lake encroaches onto the yeah. site, and then they say yeah. it's 30 meters away, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. I don't understand. You know what understand. Rico stands for in the business world? Actually, I don't. Racketeering Influenced Corrupt Organization. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> hopefully not in this instance. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But um, I just, uh, you know, yeah. I'm but, sorry, Char but <laughs> Councillor Cornfield made. I'm a not suggesting Uplands is correct. Yeah. Um, Councillor Cornfield made a, a very good um, statement at, at City Council the other night when he said, "We really need to know the depth of, of Rico Lake, yeah. and we do, and yeah. we do and know." Actually, I understand the show's sponsor, Brian Shaw. Hi, Brian, is going to help get a plum down there and. Uh, take a boat out and find out how deep it is. Yes, it's a little a little hard to put um, a boat in because where's the map? Because of all the, the wood yes. that's, that's at the end. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, we should have that. Yeah. Um, there's too much unknown right now, but we do know from the, the higher rim. Now this is uplands and you can see how the rim is high and yeah. then it's dumped Actually, down. Actually, I'm gonna show this too. Valerie, are you ready for this one? This is the gravel pit, there you go. And you can see it's a pretty big operation. Mm -hmm. And they've been there for doing it well for quite a while. Uh, and it's got a little bit of water in the bottom. So, we also and actually th that raises the thing I wanted to suggest. Um, has there been any talk of putting a tent over the whole thing so that it doesn't catch rain? There's, in the report, it said they would either use contaminated soil. Yeah or industrial soil for cover. Oh. Now other site I've looked at, down in the Harrison Chilliwack area, they use plastic film. Huh. But you have to cover, it's a, called a daily cover. I don't understand why yeah. you would bury contaminated soil and then use it for a cover that the rain would run off. It yeah. does, an industrial yeah. soil, that was kind of yeah. their first um, application and dealt with industrial soil. Industrial soil to me is not safe for fish yeah. or drinking water. Yeah. So yeah. we, I'm yeah. worried about okay. the leaching. Um, uh, there's a few other topics I'd like to get mm -hmm. to. So um, how do you feel about how the city's handling it so far? I think 
due to the Local Government Act and, and um, how the city has to uh, remain, you know, um, they can't neutral. show neutral, but they're doing a good job. I think they've, they've, yeah. they've got their environmental coordinator, their environmental people looking yeah. at, um, at the concerns and, and what needs to be known. And um, uh, the one thing that I'm asking the city for is a risk assessment. Yeah. A, a private risk assessment. Well, I think you mean independent. An independent yes, yes, not private. An independent risk assessment. Yeah. And well, when who pays for that? The city would. Well, actually, I think there might be precedents where the proponent would be asked to pay for it, and they may volunteer to pay for it. But uh, you may be right that in the end, it's if the city wants it, they got to pay for it too. Whichever way it's done, um, if you see when when. If the company went for a uh, development permit on, in a watershed, they're required to do a risk assessment. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. because of the, the concerns, um, uh, the difference that we're be, being told in yeah. the report, yeah. um, I would like to see an independent risk assessment. If this was being done enough. at the end of York Road, I wouldn't be so worried, though that is the, also where the Oyster River is. Yes. But uh, this is within walking distance of the city's water supply. And mm. that's, yeah, okay. I think we should be extra cautious. I think we should too. Yeah. Um, so um, I think that we've got a few things to worry about here. We've got exactly what is the drainage. We know the drainage from the surface rim of Upland's property on the western border where their way scales and their uh, fuel tank are drain into Rico Lake. We yeah. know that. They tell yeah. us in the report. Yeah. We know from their southeast corner back to Rico Lake is rever yeah. what they call reverse drainage from yeah. the east. Yeah. So the rest goes, the eastern drainage will go to Cold Creek, which yeah. is the hatchery water supply. Yeah and it'll go to the yeah. Quinsome River. So it's a no-win. Either direction, it's, it's dangerous. It looks... Actually, I, I shouldn't say dangerous. It, I should say it could be concerning. It looks to me like it's in the wrong location. Yeah, so we're not going to move an empty gravel pit. So What I else are we going to do with it? I suspect <laughs> they have to fill it up in the end. Yeah. Um, that would be their reclamation. Yeah. They could put city garbage in there instead of trucking it all the way down to uh, Cumberland. I don't want any garbage well, actually, <laughs> going that, into that our That was a water. sort of a joke, folks, because city garbage has got all, <laughs> all sorts, sorts of stuff, of stuff in it, like <laughs> medicines and whatever. So, Okay, moving on. Um, Lance wanted me to ask you about the 9.5 acre site or the 3.5 acre plus okay. 6 acre site. I just asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, it needs to remain um, public. Okay. Um, my views are maybe different than other people. Some people just want to park. Some people say, yeah. okay, let's put um, yeah. the aquarium on there maybe. Uh, maybe... Um, a uh, tent city for... Homeless people? I think it needs to be used by all people. Yeah. Um, and I think there's some good um, public uses for it. Uh, it could be... Um, yeah, I've got ideas for it too, but yeah. I'll keep them to myself for oh, the moment. Okay. <laughs> um, um, why I'm saying that is when they had the charrette, yeah. which some of us call the charade, um, Mr. Blackwell has left. Yeah, he has. He's Ross, but he was there. Actually, I thought he was a good guy, doing um, good work. It said in the open house, or we said in the open house, they did, they, they put on boards and you went around and you made choices. And it, the, the choice was that it be left as public assembly. Yeah. And it, you know, so it could be used for public use, whether it's yeah. a library yeah. or the aquarium yeah. or the... So how is that know. an environmental issue? You know, it wasn't through crack that um, I was involved with that. Oh, okay. And that was before crack. Okay. This was just an, uh, okay. an issue yeah. that I thought that we didn't need to yeah. put a huge tower on the rest of our waterfront. Okay. You know? uh, moving right along, uh, you got 30 seconds on climate change. 
I'll give you a minute if you really need it. <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> is, is the Campbell River Environmental Council uh, campaigning at all on climate issues? Mm, no, I think we've got Good our plate you. full. Good for you. <laughs> well, why? Well, because uh, it's been exaggerated and overblown, and this percentage of carbon and all that stuff. But anyway, I asked the question, and I kind of knew the answer. And lastly, uh, the evolution of Campbellton. Okay, well, just well, to how's go back, it okay. doesn't mean to say that I don't think that climate change is a serious issue, I do. Yeah, but it's amongst all the other things. Yeah, but, um, okay, so what's... Campbellton, now, how Campbellton? do you, what, what should happen to Campbellton? Well, I think it's great that we have Campbellton first. Campbellton Neighborhood Association. Campbell, yeah, 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 Campbellton Neighborhood Association. I think it, it was, it's got good to see the people come together. I was born in Campbellton. <coughs> I lived in Campbellton at the, um, yeah. where the climbing gym is now. Oh, okay. That was my parents' house. Yeah. And it was a great place to grow There's actually quite a few up. people in town that were born in Campbellton. Mm -hmm. So yeah. probably quite actually, a lot. Actually, Ian Bakey, I, I'm not sure if he was born exactly in Campbellton, but you know, Campbellton used to be kind of like the downtown core, did it not? Well, downtown was, I guess, Willows, Willows and, yeah. and in that, and yeah. the theater. But there was a lot of commerce know. in Campbellton. But there was, yeah, the Quinsome yeah. Hotel, and there was yeah. Ian, uh, across from the, um, it was Allen's store, across from Kitty Corner, um, there was yeah. Allen's store. It was a big green building when I was yeah. growing up. We had the Overweighty, that was on um, Spruce, Oh, and right. the Island Highway that, <coughs> huh. I think there's a hot tub place or something that was there. And across the street where the um, Chinese restaurant is, yeah. that was the f first CIBC bank that I recall huh. there, yeah. And then um, further down there was <coughs> where a little, a little house where Dr. Murphy used to live. Huh. And then um, Masu took it over who had the, the garage on the corner. And then uh, my grandma lived there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And good. then um, Sonata. No, no. What was his name? Okay. I think, I think we got to wrap yeah. it up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, there's actually one minute left. But uh, uh, Leona, thank you for the work you're doing on this. Uh, best wishes on that. And if people need to reach you, is there a good way? Yes, they can email me. Would be the best way. You got a weird email address. Do I? Well, Why it's is that? a bunch of letters that. No, anyway, it makes what is sense. It? It's okay. L O W I E A. Okay. Louie at telus.net. L O W I E A. a. Yeah, so Louie Adams, A for Adams. Oh, okay. And Louie is a nickname. Oh, that's so right. So Louie A at telus.net. Okay. So Leona Adams, thank you very much for being on Talk About. Thank you for You're welcome. having me. And uh, Brian Shaw, thank you for sponsoring this too. And thank you, volunteers. Valerie and Laura, Gord. Chaz, Marjorie, well, I'm glad Marjorie's back from holidays too. So uh, if you'd like to watch this again, Shaw TV North Island has a YouTube channel. If you uh, Google it, you'll find it. And uh, thank you for watching.